So here we have to take the antiderivative of 8x over 4x squared plus 5 all squared dx. So I really like this problem because it looks like a quotient rule for when we did derivatives. And when it looks like a quotient rule for antiderivatives, we know we have to use u sub for sure. And we also know that u must be in the denominator because if it's in the denominator, it's automatically raised to a negative exponent. So any quotient rule, our goal is going to look maybe two different ways. It could look like a 1 over x situation, which was the same as x to the negative 1 dx. And we said if we add 1 to negative 1, we get 0. So instead of writing 1 over 0, x is 0, we said ln of x plus c. Or it could be 1 over x to any other power. So if it's 1 over x squared, we would say that's the same thing as x to the negative 2 dx. And we would add 1 and get 1 over negative 1 x to the negative 1 plus c. So no matter what, if something's in the denominator, it's to a negative exponent. Even if it was just 1 over x, or in our case it would be 1 over u, that's the same thing as u to the negative 1. It's automatically being raised to a power, so that's automatically the part that's being manipulated for these. So definitely something to consider. If it's in the denominator, it's likely going to be your u because it's raised to a negative power. So for this one, the numerator is 8x, so it's not being manipulated really, um, but it is divided by x that's being multiplied by 4. It's x squared plus 5. It's all being raised to the second power. So x with what's nearby is being raised to the second power. So we are going to call that our u. So the derivative of that, du dx, a regular derivative, derivative of 4x squared has been 8x all semester, derivative of 5 is 0. So then we need to get du by itself, so we just multiply by dx. So there we have our u and our du. And the first thing we want to remember when we do substitution, and it's a quotient rule, is that it is a negative exponent. So this u down here isn't just squared, it's raised to a negative 2. So we're going to have u to the negative 2, because it was in the denominator. So quotient rules are negative exponents. And then in order to be allowed to take the integral, I need a du in there, which means I need an 8x dx which we have an 8x and a dx, so we are good to write du. Everything left over, we sub in, it's just called du. Now we're allowed to take the antiderivative. Remember that the antiderivative of x to the negative 1 is ln of x, or any other power, you get to add 1, put it in the bottom, put it up top. So a little bit more to think about with quotient rule. For this one, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, so we'd have 1 over negative 1, u to the negative 1 plus k. And then lastly, switching it out for x's, um, 1 divided by negative 1 is just negative 1. We're going to put our x's in here, raise it to negative 1, and then plus c. So just need to look back at what u was. So I'm going to replace u with 4x squared plus 5, being raised to the negative 1 power plus c. So with derivatives, I thought quotient rule was harder than the product rule, but with antiderivatives, Comparing our product rule u sub and our quotient rule u sub, I think the quotient is a little bit simpler because u is most likely that denominator since it's being raised to that negative exponent. Whereas product rule, you have to think about was it the first factor or the second factor being manipulated? But there is our final answer for that u sub.